Hey guys, I have a very special edition of TFL Talking Trucks podcast for you because I'm on location. I just landed in Detroit International Airport here in Romulus, Michigan, and I'm going to pick up a truck which is the brand new refreshed 2025 Ram 1500 tungsten. It is right here. And not only am I going to show you this brand new truck with the high output hurricane engine, but I'm also here for an event with Ram. So I need to drive across town. I need to um, get to my appointment, see some other new trucks. Uh, I cannot show you all of those trucks because that information is still embargoed for about a week from now, but now that I'm recording this. But I can at least show you maybe inside and show you some of the other Ram trucks. So on this podcast, I want to do a couple of things. This is my really first, for me, real world opportunity to test drive the new high output engine and also their new hands-free cruise control system in the Ram. You could see it right here. So let me jump in. Actually, let us jump in. Ian is behind the camera. And we got to go across town. All right, let me buckle in and then I can grab the camera. And then we can uh, get going. Well, this is also the tungsten, like I just told you, which means luxury. Everything, everything is premium. This truck is now at the very top of the Ram foot chain, their trim level. Of course, they have the limited, limited Longhorn trucks, but let me change my view here. There we go. Maybe a little bit more information. I have a giant screen. I'll do a full walk around of the truck for you because it has many, many features. Um, also, this has the high output 540 horsepower engine. Whew. Okay, so let's pull away. I'll kind of take you on the journey with me. And then also, like I said, I want to I wanna pause. I, I know there is a park nearby about, what, 10 or 15 minutes away. Um, I can stop there. I can, instead of doing a full walk around here at a busy airport uh, parking lot, maybe I can, let me see if I can get through here. I will be able to um, find some peace and quiet, hopefully, and show you, show you around the truck. All right, so let me just here pay for the parking and then we can get going. This is behind the scenes, behind, behind the scenes. Hey, here you go. And I can't wait to get on the highway because I, I get to try the new hands-free system because I've tried the General Motors system. I've tried the Ford system, but I have never actually experienced how the ram or stellantis system works all right so let's pause right here and then i'll pick it up when we get to the highway hey podcast listeners and tfl talk viewers i wanted to take a minute to talk to you about a quick and simple way to sell your car or truck with the help of our new partner high road with high road's online portal you enter your vehicle's vin number or plate mileage and zip code and you'll get competing offers from several qualified dealers in your area within seconds. You pick the best deal offered and follow through with the dealer to sell your vehicle. No more managing scammy emails from buyers on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. No more time wasted on no-show buyers. No bait and switch with a, will you take a check excuse from sketchy buyers. Now keep in mind, these offers will be for trade-in values of your vehicle. If you want to go through the hassle of getting more for your vehicle, that's up to you. But if you want to sell your vehicle hassle-free and fast, go to tfltruck.com and click Sell Your Truck in the navigation menu. Or click on the High Road ad at the bottom of the website if you're on mobile, or click on the column if you're on a desktop. 
High Road makes it easy, and we like easy. All right, so I paid for parking. Now I got to get onto the highway. This is Interstate 94, and I'm hoping it's also pre-mapped uh, for the cruise control system. As you can tell, this is Michigan roads, so, but this truck is equipped with air suspension, so a lot of the imperfections and potholes are kind of soaked up by this truck's um, air suspension. And actually, Ram 1500 trucks have had air suspension for a very long time. Um, for example, Ford still doesn't use air suspension in their pickup trucks, as far as like F-150 or Super Duties. But Ram's been using air suspension, height adjustable air suspensions for a long time. So let me kind of step on it and actually figure out, this is just normal mode, nothing fancy. Whoa! <laughs> it, it burned a little bit of rubber. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, uh, so this is the high output engine. So let's talk about the engine. And also, by the way, the secret truck that I'm gonna go see that I cannot quite tell you about in this podcast is the Ram RHO, which is another high output truck, or that's what I'm assuming our RHO stands for. Uh, but let's rewind here and come back to this truck, this tungsten for 2025 model year, which is actually on sale as we speak. Um, I saw about nine of these trucks arriving at a local dealership in Colorado. Um, maybe not the tungstens quite yet, but a lot of these 2025 Ram 1500 trucks are arriving. They removed the Hemi, the 5.7 liter Hemi is no more. So. There are three engine options. Uh, the base trucks will have the 3.6 liter Panastar V6. Then most of the trucks I'm assuming, or a large portion of them will have the three liter straight six twin turbo hurricane standard output. They also call it the SST straight six turbo. And that engine produces just um, over 420 horsepower and amazing torque, 469 pound-feet of torque. But the engine in this truck, in this premium one, is a little bit different, still three liter twin turbo, still straight six, but it's got different hardware, additional cooling, etc., to produce 540 horsepower and 521 pound-feet of torque. So yeah, this engine screams and I was in two-wheel drive when I was just um, merging onto the highway. And yeah, it will spin tires probably in any gear or in most gears. Uh, the torque comes on really quickly, really fast. Uh, this is a fun vehicle to drive. Although you don't get that Hemi rumble, right? So that's the downside probably, if any, of this engine. All right, now let me show you my cruise capability. So there's a, it looks like a new button here. It, it has this little steering wheel sign. So let me hit it. Active driving assist ready, it says. And then I need to set the speed. So let me set 65 miles per hour. And it's not steering for me quite yet. Let me see. I don't know, maybe this section is not pre-mapped. Let, uh, let me try another. So I just set my speed. Oh, there, hands-free, it says. It recognized the road. And now I'm hands-free. Everything is green. By the way, there's a sensor here on top of the column, the steering column, looking through the steering wheel at my eyes. So if I look away, I'm assuming for a little bit of time that it will warn me and then disable the system. Um, so uh, I first tried this hands-free system in the General Motors pickup truck. That was the, I believe, Silverado and also the GMC Sierra. 
Um, and they call that system, of course, Super Cruise. And that system also allows you to tow trailer with, with that system on, enabled, when it works on a pre-mapped highway or road. Then I also um, use the system Blue Cruise in a Ford F-150, like an F-150 Lightning we used to own. And um, I preferred the Super Cruise over the original Blue Cruise. And then Ford updated their system. Uh, what I can tell you about this system, I felt, I feel like it's preferring my lane. Let me show you. It's preferring, I feel like it's a little bit on the left. It's not like fully centered, at least that's my perception is. So I don't know why it's preferring slightly, if it's adjusting me slightly in the left of my lane. I'm not sure why, but it's super smooth. It hasn't disengaged. And let me see, let, what if I look at you? What if I look at you for a while? If it will, if it will complain. Oh, it's complaining a little bit. Actually, my seat actually also got vibrated. And uh, so it reminded me to kind of take control. Um, so I would call this system, this is a very brief test, of course, just about a couple minutes. I would, I would judge the system, first of all, really smooth. When it wasn't working, when I was trying to engage it, it didn't tell me why. So it didn't tell me like not mapped or something like that. I was on I-94. But then when it was, when it did recognize the highway, it engaged really quickly. It was very smooth. It kind of preferred my left side of my lane. Uh, so I would put it at, at least first impression. I would put this cruise system somewhere between the original Blue Cruise and the Super Cruise. So Ford improved the Blue Cruise system. There's now, I believe, 1.2 version of it. But I haven't spent a lot of time in the slightly improved Blue Cruise system yet. So maybe this RAM system, this cruise control system, and the Ford system are probably equivalent in many, many ways. And then the Super Cruise system, I would still put it one step above. Uh, the GM system allows you to tow with that system enabled and it's also just acts as if it was a human in my opinion. Let me see if I can enable this again. I'm on highway 12. Oh yeah, it's, it's telling me I'm going a little bit too fast. Here we are. I set it to speed limit, and once again, it's enabled, and, oh, it says work zone, so it's telling me to watch out, there is some cones on the right, so it's telling me, um, it's still enabled, but it's telling me I need to be a little bit more cautious as well, which is cool. So, power is amazing. Uh, the, here's the thing about this straight six twin turbo i've driven the standard output version and then i also drove the um, now this one both of them i mean there might be a small delay at first but once the truck knows you want to accelerate the power builds very linearly so there is no like it's not like peaky at the high rpm it's very very i mean there's a lot of low end torque it's very linear and it's just wonderful, wonderful power. And they're also very quiet. I mean, I can hear a lot of joints, uh, kind of expansion joints on this um, kind of concrete pavement right now. Um, maybe I'm hearing a little bit too much because this is a tungsten pickup truck with a price tag um, around $90,000, nine zero, 90,000. So, for 90,000, I would tell you that I would have expected a little bit more isolation from the sounds around me. I hear a little bit of tire noise and also what this, you know, what the tires are doing over these expansion joints. I also hear that. 
you may not be able to pick it up on my microphone because my mi microphone, my lapel mic is really localized. But that's just my perception of driving this truck. All right. Oh, it's still hands-free. Okay. I don't even have to touch it. By the way, the steering wheel has, it's supposed to have capacitive, so I can just rest my hand on it and the truck will recognize that I'm actually still engaged and I have my hands on the steering wheel so I don't have to like jiggle the steering wheel to, to tell the vehicle that I'm still here and I'm paying attention. All right, so let me uh, actually go pull up to this park so I can give you a full walk around because there's a lot to talk about here. There's a lot going on, many options, many features. This truck is very fancy, also very expensive. So I need to show you around this truck and tell you exactly what's going on. All right, let's, uh, let's pause for a little bit. All right, found a nice park. Okay, so this is kind of a nice and quieter location, I'm hoping, so I can show you the new truck. So let's start with styling. Let's just kind of walk around it briefly so I can kind of describe it to you. In the front here, I think if you look at it straight on, it almost looks like a luxury SUV because the front bumper is actually kind of right below the headlamp and goes right into the bumper as one piece. The grille, of course, has some chrome, big RAM RAM, and you can also have some, you also see some sensors down below uh, for radar system and park sensors, etc. And also my camera in the front. I mean, this truck is fully, fully optioned with basically almost every feature you can imagine in a luxury SUV or a pickup truck. So a pickup truck, of course, is the new family hauler and uh, the truck that does all tasks. All right, so the styling, I don't know what you think about it. Let me know in the comments. Uh, you can also um, contact us at ask at tfltruck.com. That's our email address. And by the way, I want to thank you guys for supporting us at patreon.com slash tflcar is our only Patreon page where you can become a member, donate a little bit of money to help support the podcast and help support us in general and also talk to us, give us feedback, ask us questions um, and just so we can communicate in a very, very uh, quick way. Then this truck is wearing these 22s uh, with Pirelli tires. So this is a 22, 285, 45R22 is the size and M&S, so mud and snow but it's not a, doesn't have a snowflake. And of course we don't need it. It's April, oh, now it's springtime. It's beautiful here in Michigan, or actually it's getting to be beautiful here in Michigan. Everything is starting to bloom. Uh, let's take a look at quickly at the back. Uh, the 2025 trucks have a new design for the tail lamp. So that's a very small detail, but still I think just kind of finishes it off. So overall, if you take a look at this new 2025 Ram 1500. It doesn't look that much different from the previous one. That's probably on purpose uh, because, I mean, the previous truck was already, I, in my opinion, a handsome vehicle. But if you're looking for the latest and greatest in pickup trucks, and if you were to park this next to your neighbor uh, who has a 2024 truck, uh, you may not be able to differentiate the two trucks very, very clearly, which may be a little bit of a bummer. Now, let me look at the uh, tailgate. Uh, this tailgate is standard. Uh, it's not the split tailgate that you can also get. That's an option on a tungsten. Uh, but this does have RAM boxes and it does have a cargo divider and, of course, bed liner. So, um, I love this cargo divider, by the way, in the bed here, because it kind of separates the bed into two different sections and you could move it from forward to back using these slots in the sides of the bed. And I love this because, for example, going to the airport, like I do often, I can put my couple of suitcases 
or backpacks back here and they don't roll around and I have lights here everything is lit there is a tunnel cover covering it up so it's basically a very nice commuter of course it will also do plenty of work and it closes automatically uh, the tailgate is assisted uh, these trucks can tow upwards of I believe about 10,500 pounds or around 11,000 pounds depending on configuration and of course this is a luxury truck so it may have slightly lower towing but still over 10,000 pounds which means a lot of capability still still dual pipes you could see dual exhaust pipes sticking out the back this truck is in this silver color and it does have a step it does have this bumper step to help you kind of climb in climb in inside let me see if i can open the brand box let me grab the key really quick by the way the key is also pretty special um, it has a lock on lock a double click for open tailgate double click for lowering for entry and of course remote start alarm system let me see and i think there's a key actually here for the for the side boxes interesting what if i lock this let me try let me try to lock this truck because it has should have central locking for the box as well yep so now everything is locked now let me unlock it oh maybe it is not central that's kind of interesting by the way this um ram box which is a storage area here in the side of the bed does have 400 watts of 115 volt power so you could charge tools or accessories that you might be carrying um, so i actually like this feature uh, there's still four feet width inside the bed even with the ram box so i think it's pretty useful some people don't like ram boxes i i, I like it let me close this up okay so now so let me move my backpack because i want to show you my the rear, the rear seat <laughs> just just take a look at uh, the materials i know some of you are listening to this podcast so you can't really see anything but just uh if you're if you're listening just trust me that the leather here and the materials and the details are very very special and it does have an eighty-seven thousand dollar starting price for the tungsten the 2025 ram 1500 starts i believe just under forty thousand with two-wheel drive and quad cab which is a shorter cab this is a crew cab with a shorter bed uh, and this this one with almost every feature is starts at 87 and this particular one is ninety thousand dollars let me get in so the cab actually structure of the cab is the same as the previous iteration this is kind of a more of a refresh i can recline the rear seat i have plenty of leg space plenty of headroom it's really like a limousine back here and also new for 2025 i have this premium new klipsch audio system there's a speaker everywhere there's a speaker in the back of the front seats there are speakers in the ceiling you can kind of see them here by the way the ceiling is this really sweet and soft suede type material um, there's a couple speakers in each door speakers in the front speakers in the back um, i have my vents here lots of power options and take a look i have ventilation ventilation and heated seats in the back including another 400 watt outlet and USB-C, USB, -C, USB uh, outlets for charging. So, I mean, this is really a luxury vehicle and you have every feature. Even my door handle for my, for my hand is wrapped in a special leather with special stitching. All right, now let's get inside because I want to show you some tech. By the way, power side steps also are here. Really nice, makes it super easy. 
um, to uh, get in and out, but let's get in, get in the front and check it out. Okay, so the front seats are super comfy. They're not too soft, not too firm. I think the front seat, I think they really nailed it. Um, and take a look um, at the front door actually on the side, there's seat controls. Um, similar to maybe a Mercedes or something like that, where you can actually adjust the seat, not with the buttons on the seat, but with the buttons on the side of the door. And there's a lot of adjustment, including massage. Yep. So this truck does have massaging feature. And take a look, even my headrest is powered. So I can lift it up with a button. I can adjust it. I can pull out these little side bolsters for my head. It's almost like an airplane seat in a way, uh, if everything was powered, like almost like a first class type seat. I have my VIN here in the center console with a nice tungsten badge. So a lot of, a lot of pretty cool touches. All right, I jump in. I want to turn the truck around so I, it's a little bit more shaded. And so I can show you some features here. So let me, let me start it up again. The engine comes on very quiet. Now I put it in four wheel drive auto mode. I, I wasn't two wheel drive. I put it in four auto because if I nail the throttle again, I, I don't want the rear tires to break loose. I, I want, I want the, uh, all the traction just to kind of go to the ground. So I want to turn around just briefly here so I can get most of the interior into the shade. So you can, you guys can, if you're watching this, you could see it a little bit more clearly. By the way, right now you can see my 360 degree cameras. This is a newer screen. It's still horizontal, I'm sorry, vertical orientation. Uh, portrait mode and now 14.5 inches of screen so it's pretty humongous pretty large by the way it has two sorry let me put it back it has two auxiliary cameras that you can add and if you buy the most fancy towing package on the new ram 1500 truck you can actually add cameras to your trailer and also all the way around your trailer so you can Oh, it's warning me there's somebody behind me, which is true. Um, so you can actually set up your surround camera vehicles. I actually haven't, I've seen it demonstrated once at an event, but I've never um, actually set it up myself, like at, in one of the trucks that we own or we have for a long time. So hopefully in the near future, I can set up maybe a surround view for the trailer that we have so it helps with a camping trailer right something big where if you're backing up a parking so you can see all the way around that big boxy trailer so that's what that feature is for that's not a brand new feature either that that feature came out i believe a year or two ago this one has also an optional screen that you can barely see uh for the passenger so Passenger gets their own screen so they can monitor either what the truck is doing or You know, maybe you're they're watching a movie or something like that. I cannot actually see it right now. It's blocked It's filtered. So from my position as a driver, I cannot see what's happening on the screen Which is good because I don't want to be distracted when I'm driving Here's another view at the clips the front clips uh, uh, center speaker right there in the front and there's a little copy on top here like there used to be with a little 12 volt so if you have like a, i don't know a radar detector or uh, another dash cam or something else or you're powering something else there is a lot of choices for that um, it's pretty amazing steering wheel feels really good really nice leather uh, they have a new let me show you they have a new window control switches as well as mirror control switches they redesigned it 
it's available now in all Ram 1500 trucks and depending on options some of these have blanks and some of them are fully optioned I don't have towing mirrors so I don't have a couple of buttons because if I did have an extendable towing mirror I could actually power extend it and also have light feature uh, those mirrors also have um, lights to help light up around the vehicle and of course I have a panoramic panoramic sunroof um, oh um, so that, that that's kind of most of the things I wanted to show you I was going to open the hood and and look there um, I can control my air suspension here my of course my trailer steering feature so it helps you back up a trailer my um, brake controller is my emergency brake controller brake feature is actually a hard squeeze button which is good but my gain control is actually digital buttons so it's kind of split in half uh, what if the screen has a problem um, what will happen then well then I will have to I guess repair the entire screen um, I also have two wireless chargers here which is a new feature so if you have two phones you can really easily charge everything I mean I love the center console it's huge uh, I love the way it's designed uh, I love the way it's optioned so just really really cool stuff um, so before we get going again and I'll show you where I'm actually going and I, I want to show you more truck inside let me pop the hood because I want to see this engine. I want to see the high output. Okay, popping. There it is. I think this is one of the neater engine bays that I've seen recently. A lot of manufacturers are switching to smaller displacement engines and turbocharging. And of course, Ram did as well. But this engine cover um, makes everything look nice and tidy and you're paying a lot of money for this truck so I think this is just what's necessary so if you do want to pop this engine and say to somebody hey I have four five hundred and forty horsepower under my hood um, I think this engine is pretty attractive and I'm not gonna do revs because uh, this air this exhaust system is not doesn't sound really great and it's hard for me to capture those revs so I'm not gonna rev it all right well now let's get back on the road let's keep moving and now magically I am indoors and I'm at the Ram event that I was driving to sorry I couldn't show you actually entering through the building uh, Ram team and Stellantis team didn't want me to show that but here's a, a little preview of what's happening Ram is really expanding their sport off-road truck lineup so I have a couple of heavy duties behind me and I also have some of the classic metal that I'll show you in a second. So let's start over here. For 2024, Ram actually redone their pricing structure. They actually decreased prices on the entire lineup, anywhere from about 5,000 bucks to almost $10,000 depending on the option packages and um, trim levels. Uh, what you see right here, of course, is the power wagon. Uh, the really cool truck that Nathan and I really love and I know the rest of TFL team also loves and for 2024 because the 2025 heavy duties we don't know what's going on with those trucks quite yet Ram says there'll be more news coming later this year but at least for 2024 this truck you see right here if it was a base power wagon truck with all the styling features you see here the fancy headlamps and the grill and the winch and the tires and the graphics packages uh, this is around 71,000 bucks and if you go to the online configurator at ramtrucks.com uh, you will be able to see the latest pricing so the prices are already lower and I think that's really great and of course the power wagon is unique because well I wish they would put bigger tires on this that's a whole different story this is a 33 Goodyear Wrangler Duratrack tire but it's special because it has solid axles front and rear dual locking axles so front locker rear locker you can gear it down it's got 410 gear ratios in the axles 
it's got a lot of low range, it's got crawling capacity, articulation, it's got special articulating front suspension, and of course the latest interior. Sorry for about the lighting. Um, if you're watching this, the light is pretty harsh in here, but it's because the latest tech, this is an upgraded truck. So it's got digital instrument cluster. It has a large screen. And of course you would have to pay a little bit more for that. Not just $71,000, but quite a bit more. So this is pretty cool. Now we keep moving. And right here is a truck that was released about a year ago, maybe a little bit uh, longer. This is the Ram Heavy Duty Rebel. It looks very similar to the Power Wagon, but you can see the larger wheel here. This is a 20 inch wheel instead of a 17 on the Power Wagon. So uh, once again, I wish they would have changed this to a slightly smaller wheel, wheel and larger sidewall tire. But as it is, this Wrangler Duratrac is still very, very capable. I went out to California and I test drove a bunch of these trucks. We also had it in Colorado. So very capable truck, not quite the articulator and crawler as a power wagon, but still super capable off-road. Also has more payload and towing capacity than that power wagon. And it's available with a Cummins turbo diesel. So you can see it right here, Cummins turbo diesel. So you can get it not just with a Hemi V8 like the power wagon, but also Hemi V8 or the straight six Cummins. And it's only available in the 2500 series. So you cannot get a one ton 3500 series Ram Heavy Duty Rebel. And this one starts a little bit higher, about 72,000 uh, bucks. If you were just to get the gas version of it, of course, if you add the diesel, if you add other options, it quickly can become $90,000 or maybe even more. So this is the latest for the Ram Heavy Duty Diesel. Now let me snap my fingers and we're gonna transition to the classic trucks. Bam! Take a look at this power wagon. It looks magical. It's fully refurbished and restored. This is a 1954 Dodge power wagon. Of course, back then they were called Dodge trucks, not Rams. Uh, and this is from the Stellantis collection and Ram brought it out here for the event as well to kind of show where the heritage for the power wagon and a lot of their trucks comes from. This is, of course, a military vehicle that later became a civilian vehicle, but it has that military quality. Uh, as you can see right there, some of the specs, inline six cylinder engine, not a very big displacement, 108, um, well, uh, 218, I'm sorry, cubic inches. 95 horsepower, three-speed manual, base price in 54, 1250, 1250 bucks. Take a look at the interior. Uh, yeah, this is a very special truck. Um, of course, it's four-wheel drive, low range. Um, it's got that steel dashboard, very, very neat. And it's really like a tractor, right? It's not really a highway cruiser by any means. I've driven one, not this one, but something similar to this. And they don't have very high, high um, highway speed or street speed. Um, this one has this wooden floor, which looks amazing. Also, this red color is amazing. Um, really well restored uh, classic truck right here. Uh, on my right over here is another red truck but a completely different story this is a 2004 ram srt 10 basically viper v10 powered sport truck so it's nothing to do with off-roading it has everything to do with speed they stuffed a viper v10 underneath the hood and you can kind of see that hood scoop and the air intake and the giant grail and the giant front bumper 8.3 liter v10 over 500 horsepower and a six speed manual transmission. Once again, manual. Let me show you a little bit on the inside here. If you get in, if you open the door, <laughs> look at this. Can you, can you see this shifter? It's about two feet long. 
it's basically from the uh, kind of this transmission tunnel it's reaching up um, and bam you can really bang the gears using that naturally aspirated v10 engine so no turbocharging whatsoever just lots of horsepower and these are becoming actually very collectible and very pricey as well especially this two-door one with a manual transmission and also there were some of the unique specific very very special uh, heritage editions and special editions of this truck so this srt10 kind of shows where the sport heritage of ram and dodge trucks comes from also has this big spoiler here on the uh, rear of the bed and a dual exhaust system uh, right here in the very back on the passenger side and this one is of course short bed two-door cab as lightweight as possible not four-wheel drive and these tires you know scream for mercy when you accelerate because um, there's not a lot of weight in the back of this truck and you have a lot of power going to it and, and uh, yeah it can be a challenge to drive over here if we move forward a just a little bit more this is one of ram's sema trucks this is a ram trx with a supercharged v8 on 37s so basically it's a special kind of show build that ram did and to show what's possible and to show the uh, larger tire on this particular truck and i've done videos about this from sema and so you check can check it out either on tfltruck.com or altfl.com for some of the more recent uh, footage that we've done this show truck also has a couple of dirt bikes color matched ktms in the back of the bed so kind of to show that you can still use this truck to carry payloads and a lot of cool toys along with it. And now let me snap my finger once again and show you two more cool trucks. Bam. Here's another very special truck. This is a 1978 Dodge Little Red Express pickup truck. And actually this may be the nicest little red express that i've ever seen i've seen one in very poor condition and this is pristine i've never seen one like this before um, i have a secret to tell you 1978 it's the same model year as me so we're the same age so i'm kind of drawn to this truck and um, let me know in the comments below i believe this is the only consumer version vehicle with factory dual stacks for the exhaust system so behind this two-door cab it has these chrome exhaust stacks coming out on each side both on the driver's side and the passenger side so other than some medium duty commercial grade trucks i believe this is the only consumer vehicle with a feature like this um, it's pretty neat and back then in 1970s uh, the emission regulations stifled a lot of horsepower right even though this has a 360 cubic inch v8 um, it doesn't have a ton of power this is according to this um, placard here is 225 horsepower and a base price of 4450 4450 and i love the styling of this truck the squared off nose it also transitioned to some of their heavy duty uh, pickup trucks in the 80s and of course uh, on and on and on through the years so uh, really special truck love it and finally I want to close out on this um, this little 2002 Dodge M80 concept vehicle um, it's a I want to call it a compact truck I mean it's really really tiny it's maybe even smaller than most mid-size pickup trucks uh, Ram is also showing it here at this event why is it here I have no idea uh, but I really want Ram to build either a mid-size pickup or maybe a compact truck very very soon because that market is still really competitive really heating up and also profitable because maverick ford maverick is selling well in 2023 they sold about 90,000 mavericks or maybe more so i think ram can really get into this and um, yeah get some more sales and get some more cool vehicles on the road so this is about it for now Stay tuned to April 25th, where I'll have a lot more news about the Ram RHO 
some of the other sport trucks that Ram has coming out this year. So stay tuned for that. Check out oldtfl.com. And thanks for joining me for this high output Ram 1500 tungsten review. Uh, that truck is still very impressive. I'm gonna drive it back to the airport here shortly and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna enjoy every minute of it. And yeah, this is kind of where it's at. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time at TFL Talking Trucks podcast.